here are some tips that have worked for me in order to get started again, in order to jumpstart myself. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here. I'm still healing from the last months and I thought I would share some things that are working for me. Some make a lot of sense and some have been pretty surprising. The first thing that I've been doing is puzzles. I really recommend Gallison puzzles. They are really good quality and I enjoy the textures and the colors. Um, one of the tips that I got from Karen Puzzles where I subscribe on YouTube is when you do a puzzle like this, uh, you can put the outside pieces in one bag and the inside pieces in another bag. So each time you do the puzzle, you don't have to sort them out, you know, from the, the edges to the inside pieces, which I don't find to be uh, the best part of doing the puzzle. Also to store them when they're in those bags, in those Ziploc bags, what happens if, it's, is, um, if something flips over, uh, you don't end up with pieces all over the ground or getting mixed with other puzzles. The other company that I'm really enjoying is Ebu. They tend, they do not just round puzzles, but I am enjoying these as well. Um, what they do is they, they keep my mind engaged and they also have to do with color and texture, which is very similar to painting. And so I really enjoy that. Now, the other thing that I've been doing is uh, getting some uh, help. Uh, one of the first things I had to learn to do was to really ask for help and ask for help and then accept it. Asking for help isn't nearly as hard as actually accepting it. So one of the things that I've been doing uh, that was suggested to me was to imagine a place where you felt completely safe and happy. And it was suggested that I make a sketch of that. Well, I didn't make a sketch. I made a painting. Big surprise, right? Overachiever, me. <laughs> So this is what I'm using as my safe place. It's my backyard and in my imagination it has all these collies which you know I adore all, all collies. I have one and I've had many in my life uh, but the, the weather is really warm. You can see the sun is really strong so it's warm and I'm comforted by having these nice fuzzy little animals. And this is the first piece of art that I can remember doing just out of my own head and I keep that right nearby where I can see it so I can reference it. So if I start to feel in any way sort of um, not where I want to be, I'll take a look at that and uh, take some, some deep breaths. Uh, the other thing I've found is um, eating frequently really helps, not large amounts, but often. It kind of is a signal to the system that it needs to be uh, off and running. And the other thing is um, trying to stay as positive as I can. I'm not nearly making the gains that I had hoped to make by now, but when I think back to a couple months ago, I realized that I, that I am making gains. So that's really good. I am getting stronger. Uh, the other thing is I want to give a couple of tips of jump starts. There are two ways that friends and family have jump started for me. And um, the first one is to bring food to me because if you're really, really kind of fragile, it's, it's hard to make food. It's hard to think about food and make it for yourself. So getting those meals, it allowed me to interact really briefly, you know, thank you for bringing the meal. I got to see their face. And then uh, all I had to do was pop those meals into the oven and have something warm, which really, really, really has helped. Uh, the other thing is, um, my attention span has been really short and I've been told to expect that when you're kind of more on the weaker side and uh, but I didn't yeah I've been looking at TikTok and YouTube but I can't even sustain hardly enough cognitive space to see a, a, a whole movie certainly not in one stretch that was concerning to me uh, and I belong to a book group we meet every month I haven't met with them since August so that's a long time and I'd never never missed a meeting before but anyway August is when they last met, I mean when they met as a group and, and I still participated. Now it's January and I know that the book for this month is a 500 page book. Usually we have a rule that you don't read books over 400 pages. So uh, I thought there's no way, you know, I'm not going to read that book. Um, but a friend came over, the person who's going to be hosting the group. Uh, each person hosts the, the, the group uh, given whatever month it is on a rotation. And she said, what if I just read the first chapter to you? And she was an early educator, and so she knows how to read really well and be engaging. And she read the first chapter to me, and as soon as she did, I thought, I'm in. Now, it's a really good book, which really helps, but, um, but also having her read out loud to me 
jump-started my interest in wanting to read the book. And the book we are reading is uh, One for the Crow, One for the Blackbird, One for the Crow. It's a really good book. And I will finish that today. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, ah, an apology. Ah, I have an apology to make. I've watched any of this channel for any period of time because yesterday I sat down to try to paint seriously for the first time. Well, the stakes weren't high, I just was curious to see. Um, and it was really, really hard. And I know that I've been on this channel sort of saying, you look for your lights, your mediums, your darks, and there's a system, and here you, you, know, and you, here you go systematically, and you will have a painting. Well, I sat down yesterday, and no, 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 it did not go that way at all. Um, I completely forgot how to paint. It wasn't just being clumsy, like, I, like um, not being sure what colors to mix or to get the consistency of the paint where I wanted it to be. I expected that kind of technical issue. It had to do with the actual seeing. I wasn't discriminating between darks, mediums, and lights very well. Really not well. And um, I thought, oh, wow. You know, this is almost six months of practice that I haven't been doing, and it, it really showed up. In the end, I was really happy that I painted it all because I feel like that's part of a jump start, and also because I was able to get into the place that painting puts me, where I'm very happy, I'm in another land, another world, whatever that state of being is. I was happy that paint, that uh, doesn't matter what I painted, but I was able to get to that state, be in that, that frame of mind. That was really nice. But what did surprise me was how quickly I forgot or lost the ability to do what had been become just, I would say I've been sending the message that it's simple, you know, because for me practicing every day and doing it every day for, you know, year, you know, 10 years or whatever it is, it had become, I don't want to say simple, but formulaic and pretty predictable. And that was not the case yesterday. It was somewhat chaotic and surprising. So that is my apology. This, this, is, this, this painting thing is hard. <laughs> it's hard to do, uh, but worth it. That was, that was, I guess, the takeaway is it's entirely worth it to keep trying and to keep doing it and to still show up to do it. And I'm committed to showing up to doing it because that is the most important place where I can feel whole. I'm definitely painting for myself at this point. I would say this channel is for myself at this point in a way kind of like a journal that I'll be able to look back at um, as, as time goes by. But keeping it positive and wanting to say that's where this person is right now and hoping that your life is going well or at least improving in any ways that you want it to. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color, which I completely forgot how to do yesterday and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would, and I'll see you next time.